nobody can defy the laws of nature but it's only a marxist revolutionary who can stretch the laws of nature to the maximum and that is what comrade shankaraya is doing without states there is no union government without states there is no india that is bharat lakhs of crores of rupees have been collected due to increased central taxes on petroleum products which they are refusing to withdraw if they withdraw that the price of petrol and diesel will fall at least by 35 rupees per liter they have created an overarching hindutva identity in the country the by only focusing on sharpening communal polarization and the chief minister of up would conduct his public meetings with a bulldozer near the dais clearly aiming saying that this is how the minorities will be dealt what the bhagavad gita says karmanye vashu adhikaraste ma phaleshu kadachana your duty is to do fulfill your karma if you are a shudra today you will have to do manual scavenging that is still happening in india even after the after the practice is bad and that is your duty the modi government today has aligned india as the junior partner of usa of us imperialism and thereby along with its domestic agenda of destroying the secular democratic republic of india there is any one force that is capable of challenging the bjp and the rss it is this red flag and it is the cpim and therefore they should be targeted that we have to save india today so that we can change india for the better in the future and to move towards socialism in the future for that we have to save india today and that is the priority where people should all unite and rally nobody can defy the laws of nature but it's only a marxist revolutionary who can stretch the laws of nature to the maximum and that is what comrade shankaraya is doing continuing his revolutionary work and with a memory which is clearer than even mine at this moment i can admit <laughs> he's he's spoken of the forthcoming all india party congress so that spirit is what i, I think we'll have to consolidate and strengthen in the coming days to face the challenges immense challenges that we have before us as a country as a people and as a revolutionary movement to liberate humanity from exploitation the little democratic rights and civil liberties of our people with large scale arrests under the uapa sedition act and other draconian laws so we have a multi pronged attack on our constitutional order and the, with the sole aim of replacing the secular democratic republic of india with the rss fascistic concept of a hindutva rashtra along with this in order to achieve this objective of the hindutva rashtra all the independent institutions and authorities created by the indian constitution are under grave attack beginning from the parliament itself when comrade tk nagarajan and i were in parliament together we could debate discuss many of the issues and the laws when they were made today there is no discussion the force of brute majority it is the tyranny of the majority that has reduced parliament into not even a debating society but just a rubber stamp of the executive or the government likewise the supreme court the judiciary another pillar of our constitution for nearly 3 years now the challenges to the abrogation of article 370 the dissolution of the state of jammu and kashmir the challenges to the constitutional validity of the citizenship amendment act the challenges to the legalization of political corruption through the electoral bonds all these cases continue to remain pending not heard before the supreme court for the last 3 years likewise you have the functioning of the election commission that is coming under increasing question marks that even the code of conduct that they prescribe even violations of that are not acted upon and then you have the enforcement directorate the the cbi which function as a political arms of this government so the net result is the undermining of the four fundamental principles or the foundational pillars of our constitution 
that is the economic sovereignty of India, secular democracy, social justice and very importantly federalism or the relations between the union government and the states. All these four fund foundational pillars are under assault today. So this is the gravest challenge for India's constitutional order which we'll, we will have to rise to defend after all that has been sacrificed during the freedom struggle and these 75 years, today we are at the brink of a government that is proceeding to destroy these very foundations which cannot be permitted. And that is why the CPIM has very, very strongly and consistently, it's always been, but now strongly, come forward giving the slogan to the people of India that we have to save India today so that we can change India for the better in the future and to move towards socialism in the future. For that we have to save India today and that is the priority when people should all unite and rally. The, what I was speaking about in the four foundational pillars, federalism. Today the rights of the states are being assaulted very, very severely. We must recollect and remember the first article, Article 1 of the Indian Constitution, Article? Article 1. Article 1 of the Indian Constitution says, India, that is Bharat, is a union of states. Unquote. That is the definition of India. Without states, there is no union government. Without states, there is no India, that is Bharat. But this recognition of the states, the rights of the linguistic states, of that language, of that culture, of that traditions, each one of them were equally respected when the constitution was drafted and implemented these seven decades with many limitations and many violations. That's a different point. But today they want to destroy federalism altogether in order to establish a unitary state structure, which is necessary for converting the secular democratic republic into a fascistic Hindutva Rashtra. That is why today, they contest the fact that they are the union government. They say they are the central government and the states are only administrative units. No, every state with their language, their pride, their history, their culture and their pride in their culture, they will have to stand up to assert that India is a union of equality between these various linguistic groups, between the various diversities that we have between the various nationalities that we have and that cannot be violated and that is a very important element of our struggle today. Yet during these four years, since our last uh, state conference at India Party Congress, there have been many, many popular struggles and people's struggles and many big struggles and mighty struggles. You had the countrywide resistance to the imposition of the Citizenship Amendment Act, you had the historic farmer struggle that finally made an obstinate Prime Minister to bend backwards and repeal the agri laws. You had the trade union struggles and only yesterday, the fourth of the two days All India strikes, in the last four years, the fourth All India strike against these policies of loot of our country's national assets, privatization for the rights of the working people and the working class. That, that has happened last two days and you had the growing unity of our uh, agricultural sector, farmers, agricultural labor and the working uh, people, the working class, the trade unions. All these big struggles have been going on. But yet, when elections come, the BJP continues to maintain a certain edge and gain victories. Why? Why is this popular discontent among the people of the immense agonies that has been imposed by this government, by their policies. Their lives are being destroyed. Prices of petrol now have gone up seven times in the last eight days. And they'll continue to go now. And they only give excuses saying Ukraine war, that's why it's happening. But the fact is for the last seven years, eight years, lakhs of crores of rupees have been collected due to increased central taxes on petroleum products which they are refusing to withdraw. If they withdraw that, the price of petrol and diesel will fall at least by 35 rupees per litre. 
but they are making money at the expense of the people yet in elections they keep getting the support why that must be properly pinpointed and that must be defeated that is why they are able to they have created an overarching hindutva identity in the country the by only focusing on sharpening communal polarization during these recent ele uh, elections to the five state assemblies the prime minister and all the leaders of the bjp did not utter a single word on growing unemployment on the price rise on growing poverty on growing hunger all the speeches were concentrated on 80% versus 20% spreading communal hatred of between hindus and the muslims all the speeches were concentrated on shamshan ghat and kabristan in hindi what they are called the different places where the departed are are said said goodbye to between the hindus and the muslims and the chief minister of up would conduct his public meetings with a bulldozer near the dais clearly aiming saying that this is how the minorities will be dealt the spread of hate the spread of violence following that and that is the basis on which they have created a sort of a hindutva identity over which all other problems of the people they seek to send to the background and this they are doing by insidious methods which we will have to recognize and fight and one of those methods is through the new education policy to control the mindsets of the people now the latest thing is the prime minister advertising a film called the kashmir files he talks about the fact that when militancy developed in the 1990s in the kashmir valley many hindu brahmins who are called as kashmiri pandits pandit means a brahmin the brahmins were targeted and there was a migration of them the film is about those attacks on the on on these uh, pandits but what are the facts of the matter the police headquarters at shrinagar had put out in december the data in the shrinagar district saying that during the 1990s militancy 89 kashmiri pandits were killed at the same time 1635 people belonging to the other faiths mainly muslims were also killed by the militants they don't mention the other fact they only concentrate on the pandits to rouse the hindu muslim passions when the truth is that every human life is precious every human being is a human being militancy can be fought only by a united indian people not by dividing the indian people but they want to divide the indian people to consolidate the hindutva vote bank and that is why these insidious sort of propaganda methods are also being used and this needs to be properly exposed and people will have to realize that there is a political agenda be behind these entire moves that the government and their organizations are doing they have made this film tax free and the prime minister personally has recommended everybody should see it and the campaign that they conduct is those who don't see the film are not indian patriots this is the insidious manner in which they are dehumanizing indian people not as patriots as indians as human beings but as hindus or muslims and now they have begun a more insidious uh, method of wanting to introduce the compulsory teaching of bhagavad gita in the schools the vice president of india has gone on record to say what is wrong in saffronizing education what is wrong in teaching the values of the bhagavad gita one when you are teaching values of the bhagavad gita teach the values of all religions in india according to the secular principles of our constitution but why insist only on bhagavad gita and what is that teaching of bhagavad gita what is it what does it generate that is the important thing that we have to realize what is the meaning of this of this move so having the many things that the bhagavad gita talks about many values many principles many issues the central central point of vishnu telling or krishna parthasarathi in the bhagavad gita mahabharata telling arjuna that he should fight and kill his own cousins his own relations 
is based on what? What the Bhagavad Gita says? Karmanye vashu adhikaraste ma faleshu kadachara. Your duty is to do, fulfill your karma. You should not bother about the fruits of fulfilling, doing your duty. What is this karma? Who defines this karma? This karma is defined by the Manusmiti. This karma is defined by the caste divisions in the society where into which caste you were born. It is justified because of the sins you committed in your last life. You are paying for those sins by being born as a Dalit, as a Shudra, as somebody, as a lower caste. Your duty is to fulfill the duties of that caste so that in your next life you will get a better life. Now whether there was a past life or whether there is a next life, I mean people like us know that there is no past life, no next life. We are here, we are here, we, we are a materialist. But anyway, even if you accept that, that means what? Justification of the caste atrocities that continue to be perpetuated. If you are a Shudra today, you will have to do manual scavenging that is still happening in India even after the, after the practice is banned. If you are a Dalit, you will have to do the, keep doing the service to the upper caste. And that is your duty. If you fail in your duty, the Bhagavad Gita says, then you will have a worse life in your next life. So you will have to do your duty. That is justification of the caste hierarchies and social oppression. And that is the other element, justification of the subjugation of women. Pitra Bhakti, Pati, Pati Vrata, Putra Seva. The life of the woman is service to, I mean, Bhakti of to the father, loyalty to the husband, and service to the child, and particularly the son. And that is the hierarchy. So the brutal rapes, gang rapes and murders of our Dalit sisters can be justified. That is the karma. The caste atrocities can be justified. The burning alive of, of lower caste can be justified. So this is the order that is sought to be sought and this is to be ingrained into the mindsets of our youngsters saying this is the society, ideal society for India. And that can only be achieved under this sort of a rule. This is the insidious propaganda to control the consciousness of people's understanding and minds, which has to be fought at all levels in order to ensure that such a reactionary, backward and exploitative system that be created under their order should not be permitted. These developments in India, dangerous developments, are happening also in the background of very important Again, some more dangerous de developments globally. During the COVID period, the gross mismanagement that the capitalist countries have done, US imperialism post-COVID is seeking to strengthen its hegemony over the world. And in that process, it sees China, socialist China, as a big threat to its hegemony <coughs> and therefore has begun or intensified its entire efforts globally to today isolate China. Earlier, imperialist slogan was to contain China, the containment of China. Now the slogan is the isolation of China. And in order to isolate China, because it's a future threat to imperialist hegemony, it is mobilizing all its allies. And in this process, dividing the world into the, the dividing the world on the been conflicts between imperialism and socialism growing. And it is in this background, while it is seeking to strengthen its hegemony, that the Ukraine war has come about. The effort to strengthen its hegemony, US imperialism has been during these years, been expanding the NATO, the military alliance, its military alliance, in Europe moving towards Russia. When the Soviet Union disintegrated, the 
then assurance was the NATO will not move beyond Germany. But today, before the Ukraine war, the NATO has enrolled all other Eastern European countries except Ukraine and Belarusia as its members. Before this war, it had 1,75,000 combat troops of NATO on the Russian border. This war must end immediately. That is what CPM had said and continues to maintain. They must be stopped, immediate ceasefire and recourse to discussions and diplomatic means to resolve the problems. But actually we must realize this is not a war between Russia and Ukraine. This is a war between Russia and USA and NATO. And Ukraine is the unfortunate theater. And this has to be resolved only when the NATO remains com committed to its pledge of not expanding beyond its own alliance. Actually, NATO is, is, is not necessary now. It was formed as a counter during Cold War to the Warsaw Pact countries headed by the U USSR then. That has ceased to exist. There's no rationale for NATO. But that is the instrument for American hegemonism, imperialist hegemonism. And that is why this war, if it has to be ended, the actual target of this war was to neutralize Russia with its equal nuclear arsenal that can challenge USA. On the one hand, isolate China, on the other hand, neutralize Russia. Therefore, global hegemony of imperialism can go unchallenged. Like but this U.S. imperialist hegemonism drive, that is being met with resistance in many countries, particularly in Latin America, where the USA wanted to strengthen its hegemony in many countries, and the most significant was in Chile recently. Chile was the country with which the neoliberal agenda experiment began. Fifty years later, Today, Chile has a left government with a strong presence of the Communist Party of Chile in the cabinet and all youngsters in the age group between 30 and 40 serving as ministers and they have defeated in the backyard of U.S. imperialism in Chile the pro-U.S. government and won the elections and formed the government. Likewise in Peru, nearby, then in Honduras, then in various countries in Latin America, this resistance is advancing and is advancing under the leadership of the red flag. It is the left that is dominating in this resistance. And this is happening also not only in other countries like Venezuela. The Cuba continued to the increased blockade. Socialist Cuba is resisting. But even in Europe, in the Scandinavian countries, all the five Scandinavian countries today have defeated the right-wing forces and there is either a social democratic or a left-oriented government in these countries. That is wherever people have risen, unitedly in struggle, the pro-US governments have been overthrown and people's voice has been established and the red flag behind them, these governments have been formed. This is the, this is the development and the trend in, in the world of resistance to U.S. imperialism globally and domestic reaction in each country. In this global battle against U.S. imperialist hegemony, the Modi government today has aligned India as the junior partner of USA, of U.S. imperialism, and thereby, along with its domestic agenda of destroying the Secular Democratic Republic of India, in globally, they are the staunchest allies of U.S. imperialism. So that is why today, in the interest of Indian people and the Indian nation and our constitution, it is absolutely essential that this government should be removed from remaining in government and that is the central task that emerges to save India today and to regain our position in the world as an independent voice pursuing an independent foreign policy. That's why if we have to isolate and defeat the BJP, who are the main, P main forces that will be able to achieve this? Here, the left and the CPIM, we have a very important role to play. 
This is not because we are the CPIM, therefore I am saying it. It is Prime Minister Modi who recognizes today if there is any one force that is capable of challenging the BJP and the RSS, it is this red flag and it is the CPIM and therefore they should be targeted. That is why when they won the elections in Tripura, they were celebrating in a big way. In the parliament then, Prime Minister was addressing the BJP MPs. Somebody asked the Prime Minister, Tripura sends only two MPs to the parliament out of 542. Why are we celebrating so much for just two MPs? What did the Prime Minister answer? He said there may be only two MPs, but defeating the CPIM is our biggest ideological victory for the BJP. Before these elections in UP and the other states, Prime Minister called a television channel, which is how he operates. He doesn't meet the media, but he dictates to them called a television channel, gave an interview where he said, where the question was about the left. He said, left is weak today. It is there only in one corner of the country in Kerala. But, he added, with emphasis, it is an ideology that needs to be defeated as far as the BJP is concerned. Now, this recognition by them, by our class enemy, that the CPIM is important, the lead flag is important, they have to defeat them. That is why they attack us brutally in Tripura, in Bengal, even in Kerala to de destabilize. We are the principal target. Why? Because our class enemies realize that if there is any force in India today that can organize and mobilize the Indian people on issues, on policies, alternative policies, and lead them into struggles without any fear of what will be the consequences, that force is only the left under the leadership of the CPIM and this red flag, and that is the responsibility we have to discharge today. If we have to discharge this responsibility, the primary task is to strengthen ourselves, the CPIM, further. On the basis <coughs> of our increased strength, to strengthen the unity of the left forces in our country and on that basis to strengthen the unity of the left and democratic forces in struggles, in people's struggles, to intensify these struggles and as and when elections come or be prior to the elections all along, create, establish the broadest front the coalition of the broadest front of secular forces to take on the challenge of this attempt to convert India into a fascistic Hindutva Rashtra, a broadest platform will have to be forged of all secular forces that we will play a role in ensuring that such a platform shall come about. So these four steps, independence front of the party, the left unity, left and democratic forces in struggles with an alternate program and the broadest possible front of secular forces against these communal forces and the threat of the fascistic Hindutva Rashtra to be established. This, are the, um, this is the way in which this challenge can be met. And in discharging the challenge, we will have to play that the CPIM has to play an important role. And that is why on these aspects, I'm sure in the next two days, the Tamil Nadu unit, which is one of our, apart from the three strongholds we had as a party, we have the next ranks Tamil Nadu in the CPIM's, CPIM's uh, existence in India today. So Tamil Nadu has an important role to play. And on the basis of this understanding and these tasks, these four tasks that I enumerated, in the next couple of days, the state unit of the CPIM will discuss the ways in how they should further consolidate that unity of secular forces that has been formed in Tamil Nadu that could defeat the BJP and the AID, DMK, how to consolidate that and how to enlarge that beyond Tamil Nadu so that we can take up this challenge to save India today so that we can change it for the better in the coming days, that challenge will be undertaken.
by the state unit and this state conference of the Tamil Nadu CPIM. That is why on behalf of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of India Marxist, with the confidence that all these issues will be discussed in the context of Tamil Nadu by the next two days in the conference, and they'll draw the proper lessons and the tasks to be undertaken to further strengthen CPIM, the left, the left and democratic forces, and the anti-communal agenda forces, the broader secular platform in Tamil Nadu, and further strengthen this combination that is, that is there in Tamil Nadu. With that confidence, I convey my revolutionary greetings and formally inaugurate the 23rd State Conference of the CPIM. Red salute to all of you.